Right, hi guys. So I'm just going to do a quick a comparison between the Sony A7R2 and the RX10 Mark IV from Sony. It's not a scientific test. They're slightly different. They're not going to be 100%, but what I was going to check really was to see what the sharpness difference was, the colour and stuff like that actually turns out. So I've got a bottle of beer, a pencil and a £2 coin. We're shooting at f8, so hopefully most of it will be in in focus. The Zeiss Battis is actually showing me it's 0.9 meters away. When we focus on it, there we go. So 0.9 meters away, and we've got roughly a centimeter depth of field either side of that focus point. So some of the on this uh, should be more noticeable on the A7R2. It's gone, gone to sleep again. Um, Oh, has that gone back to what it should be? Nope. Right. right, there we go. So, both the same settings, ISO 100, ISO 100, um, F8, 1 40th of a second. So, we're going to take a picture. and uh, see how they turn out. This is 85mm prime, this is a 24 to 600mm equivalent uh, f2.4 to f4 lens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up to its maximum aperture at that range and adjust the shutter speed probably to about 1 60th. So that's f3.5 Let's adjust this as to the same. One sixtieth. There we go. And then we can see the depth of field difference. So that's that. I'm gonna then crank open this lens because it can do it to f1.8. Let's show you the difference. We're also gonna go back to the f8 situation. I'm gonna crank the ISO up to thousand the same as this this camera as well on the RX10 see exactly what is what so what we've got here about one three twentieth of a second is probably about right there we go so take a picture take a picture and then we're gonna go ISO 2000, up to about 800th of a second, and then it's the same on the RX10. There we go. There we go. So that's just a quick noise test. I mean, do I ever really shoot above ISO 2000 generally? Probably not, but you can. Let's take this one up to. 3200, the same with the RX10, and just have a look and see exactly how that, that's working. So, 1600 for a second. So, the settings are exactly the same on both cameras. I've just got auto white balance. We're using the uh, Rotolite EOS there just as a single light shot. It's obviously not artistic, and we're not worried about anything like that. So, we're just basically going to have a look to see if there's much difference in the real world. Um, to see what the real quality difference is. It's nothing that interesting, it's just a bottle of beer, but there's some interesting detail on there with um, the printing and everything. There's a pencil next to it, so we'd be able to see the difference in depth of field and things like that. So I might actually stop it down now to F16, which is the maximum on the RX10 anyway. Still at ISO 3200. Let's drop it down to 1 400th of a second. Same settings. Noticeably much faster focusing on the uh, RX10 uh, Mark IV compared to the uh, Sony A7R2, different type of camera. Um, still an absolute beast, but as an everyday camera, I'm using this now just picking up and go. This is my work toy, um, and also portraiture and stuff like that, higher quality. But I've still yet to use this on a, on a photo shoot for portraiture. I really want to do some comparisons to see how usable it really is. 
Um, anyway, so we're going to go to the computer now, and we'll have a look at these images on the on the PC in Photoshop, and uh, see what they look. So hi guys, and now I'm at the computer. So I'm just going to open the first shot we took with the RX10 Mark IV. I'm not going to do any sharpening or anything, so I've left it at as was, as 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 it was taken. Uh, auto white balance, um, f8, one fortieth of a second, and ISO 100. Okay. So that is that one, and then what we'll do is we will open the Sony A7R2 version as well. So this isn't a scientific test, it's just a comparison to see sharpness and depth and colour, stuff like that. Um, so let's go to the RX10. So I'm going to go 100%. As you can see, there it's pretty sharp. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's just make that. So it's pretty sharp. I mean, it's actually point. I'd spot focus around this area somewhere, um, just in the middle there, about around about where the R is in Peroni. As you can see, the pound coin, uh, two pound coin itself, um, is. Um, pretty sharp as well, actually. Um, the pencil, not too bad. The the writing there in the bottom of the, the bottle is, is nice. You can see the Rotolite AOS being distorted there. Um, I mean, that's an easy, easy edit to get rid of that. Um, but uh, yeah, so pretty good there. And then if we go to, so actually if we move that over to the side there, and then we look at the Sony A7R2 at 100%. This is where the difference is more than double the resolution and a full frame sensor. Um, the depth of field is, is shallower, but if you look at the, the B, for example, on um, over here on the left hand side, sharp as anything, the rest of the wording up here is sharp. Really. We can now see the printing. So if I go even closer, you can actually see the printing part of the actual label um, without. But so if we go and make it the equivalent of a 20, 20 megapixel, 100% uh, image. So something like I can't go back up there because it will uh, do that anyway. So let's move over slightly over here. That's about right. So, depth of field on the RX10 over here on the left hand side. Not bad on the pencil, it's pretty sharp, even the, the, the tip up the top there of the pencil is nice and sharp. The two pound coin is sharp. Same settings, F8, the pencil is quite soft, especially up near the top there of the, the actual um, point. But the two pound coin is noticeably out of focus, and that is down to the size of the uh, the sensor and the depth of field is completely different to a, a smaller sensor um, down to the lens design and, and also the size of the smaller the sensor the more depth of field you actually get compared to with a larger sensor you actually get shallower depth of field at the same settings so it's, it's noticeable but every day would you ever notice really um, there's ways around it we could set the RX10 at, if you wanted that, for example, if you wanted that two pound coin uh, shallower, you could set the RX10 further back and zoom in to say 200 millimeters or something, or maybe even more, or even 400, and get a similar result. So there are ways around it. Um, at the 600 millimeters, we've already done a test with the Canon 1DX Mark II, and, and we used my Sony A7R2 on the MC11 adapter. Um, on the 600mm f4 um, Mark II lens from Canon, and that was an interesting result. These are in obviously studio conditions, so the lighting and everything is exactly the same compared to outside where the sun was changing and, and things like that. 
the noise values look pretty similar to me. Colors, very similar. Um, you know, and hardly anything in it, depending on how the sensor and everything is set. I can't remember if I've left it. Actually, I have left it sRGB. So the um, RX10 is sRGB and the A7R2 is at full RGB. So there may be a slight change in color uh, part there. Um, so if we close them down, those ones. So they're ISO 100. So I'm going to go to the full extreme, the opposite direction. And we are going to do right to the bottom. So this was at uh, yeah, ISO, uh, yeah, ISO 3200. This one. Um, this is from the A7R2. Uh, so open it straight away. So no, no editing or changing of um, of uh, settings there. So this is straight out of the camera. Let's go for the same situation. So you can see straight away the the noise control difference there. So ISO 3200 from the RX10. Let's go 100%. You can see there it is. It's quite noisy compared to the A7R2 at 100% which means it's more than double that's actually quite a clean image personally that's not too bad at all um, that's massive so if we went back out to roughly the same let's drag that off um, get roughly the same get over there You can see. Let's say, there we go. Obviously, the angle is very slightly different. Just I couldn't get the cameras exactly in the same position. Um, but you can see how much cleaner the A7R2 is. But there's no noise reduction on these at all. You could clean up the RX10 Mark IV quite nicely actually, and make it look like that. It wouldn't take much at all. So the fact that it's actually not bad. That's not bad at all. So actually, uh, I'd, I wouldn't want to shoot any more than um, 3200, ISO 3200 on the RX10, I don't think. I've shot with the A7R2, the ISO 10,000 a few times, and it's you know it's quite usable. The depth of field there, if we go in at F16 on the A7R2, the, the depth is still relatively shallow, so that um, two-pound coin there is still a little bit soft. But if we go over to the uh, RX10 is actually sharper, very slightly. Um, obviously, with more noise, but uh, yeah. So the the way that's working is for an everyday use camera on the um, RX10. That's still a usable image in my day. And if I just push auto levels, it's brightened it up, which has lost a little bit of the noise. Anyway, but you can actually see quite a bit of noise around here. Um, and like I say, we could we could sort it out. So if we should close that down quickly, and then open it again. So it's ISO 3200, and that was shot at f16, one four hundredth of a second. So we can just go noise control, and we can drop it down. It's instantly, instantly better. You know, it looks pretty usable. We've hardly done anything to it, literally two seconds. So it just proves that even though there is a little bit of noise, you can still get around it, which is which is cool. Um, let's drop it down a bit. So if we went to the ISO 1000, there it is. There we go. So an ISO 1000 shot straight out of the camera. That's much cleaner. That is much cleaner. So ISO 1000, I mean, you can see the, the wood grain nice and clear. It's, the noise is starting to happen in the shadows, you can see there, uh, which obviously a little bit a little bit annoying. So the shadows over here on the left hand side, you can see a little bit of noise noise happening there very slightly. I mean, like I say, we can get rid of it. It's not really a, not really an issue. Um, 
but um, nice and sharp on the on the pencil there. The writing is still very clear. A little bit of noise on the bottle, I can see there. Um, but like I say, we can literally just there you go, soften it back. So as we open that now, we've just given it what 24% noise reduction, and that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> you know, so ISO 1000 in studio conditions. But if you're zooming in quite heavily, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. The um, the difference there then, so if we have a look at the A7R2, the ISO 1000, which would be... Do, 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 find it, there we go. So, ISO 1000, straight out of the camera. Not done anything to it. There you go. Still massively clean. Massively clean. Nice and sharp. Nice and sharp. You can see the scratches there on the glass. That's ISO 1000. So you know that you can shoot up to 3200 on most cameras nowadays with no real drama. Yes, a little bit of noise. On the smaller sensor is going to happen. It will. Um, like I say, noise... noise um, reduction on, my, on the, all cameras I've used is turned off um, but you can see there still massive massive difference in depth of field difference massive difference nice and sharp Good. so just an interesting quick test really just to see you know what's possible what the real results are I do <coughs> sorry excuse me you see these scientific lab tests and everything like that where people talk about oh, this camera is slightly better than this and slightly better than that. It's like cars. They're all good. They all drive. They all go around corners. They all stop. Some are better than others in a little respect. Or if you pay thousands and thousands and thousands or even millions, the car is going to be much better. But in the real world of the average, the average camera, for example, or the average car, they're all pretty similar. So with technology now, the sensor technology, the computing power that we we have now compared to what we had even five years ago is massive, it's, it's, it's huge. So the quality of the sensors that have been built are even more precise than they were. The mechanical shutters, they last longer than they used to. They're quieter, they're, you know, they can move quicker. Uh, and now we're onto electronic shutters, so there's no actual mechanical shutter needed in, in some respects. The RX-10 has a mechanical and electronic shutter so it can choose between mechanical if you're using flash for example or if you're going up to the 30, 1 32 thousandth of a second uh, shutter you don't have the mechanical there it's, it's electronic um, which is actually I've used it a couple of times it's actually quite quite handy actually having that sort of speed um, I never thought it would actually be possible but it's here um, but yeah so just a quick look really I mean hopefully it may show anybody who's looking at the RX10 or an A7R2 um, if you're if you're using one of the other uh, Sony's, or you're looking at the the difference between the A7R2 and A7R3, I haven't used an A7R3 yet. I know there's a bigger battery. I know it's the same sensor that's had a tweak. But is it really worth upgrading? I'm not going to buy one yet. I probably will at some point. But the A7R2 for what I need now is absolutely fine. I do shoot lowish ISO most of the time for what I, I actually need to do. Yes, you can turn it up and you utilize the, the sensitivity quite nicely, which is great. The the different real difference for me of the A7R2, which I use for advertising and to portraiture, uh, the occasional wedding, uh, and you know other high high quality um, photography, depending on what what's needed. You have a range of lenses. I've got different lenses for obviously different jobs, everything from ranging from a 180 degree diagonal fisheye, all um, the way up to the 150 to 600 Sigma macro, um, some uh, primes for portraiture or landscape, things like that, um, or product product shoots. Which the reason I looked into the RX10 Mark IV is so I could actually pick a camera up and just go out for the day. I've got a camera with me. 
I don't like using the mobile phone. It's very limited. Yeah, they take okay pictures. You know, if it's just a snap or if you just want to do a video clip, absolutely brilliant. It's in your pocket all the time. But the fact that I can now carry a camera that's extremely capable from 24 millimeter relatively wide angle to 600 millimeters is incredible. The speed of it, the the sharpness, and the the way it works is incredible. There's obviously going to be haters out there who will probably disagree with me saying it's alright, it's a bit that, but in the real terms, it's an incredible piece of kit. Um, and for me, it's it's doing its job. It's absolutely brilliant. So anyway, that's that's just a quick view of what the quality of the images are like. The um, the AOS I was using, uh, the, the Rotolite AOS I had on just literally shooting from above looking straight down. So it's just just on. It was, I wasn't going to use flash. Um, it was literally just as, uh, I think it was 100% probably, just to give us plenty of light, just to just see what was going on. I did think about doing a, a lower light test, but I think what I might do that with that is actually go outside and do some low light um, star shots and a few other things like that, see what's uh, maybe some stuff, um, uh, light trails and things like that. Um, now it's winter and it's getting dark quite quite early, so I should do another little video at some point when I get a bit of time um, and compare the cameras again to see what the difference is, um, and then uh, go from there. But uh, yeah, keep watching. Please subscribe and um, click the little bell thing for the notifications that there's a new video. And I shall try and keep um, at least one video a week, if not two or three, if I can. There is, please, well, I'll say there is, um, please comment on any of the videos and I will try and respond. Um, if you've got any ideas that you would like me to do a video about, I'm willing to listen and, and uh, help if possible. If you've got, you know, a thought, you know, any thoughts or, or recommendations or any thoughts about the videos I've done, um, I'm still learning the video thing. I don't script any of this, this is literally off my, out of my brain as we go. So I'm not. I'm trying not to blag. I'm not blagging it, and I'm not um, being um, untruthful about anything. I'm not trying to big up Sony. I just use them because I get on with what what they provide. Um, I used to be a Nikon film shooter before Conic Minolta um, as well. So um, it's not about the brand as such. It's more about what they have delivered in a package that actually works for me. So it's a case of if you're a Canon shooter, you know, I, I was messing around with the, the Canon 1DX Mark II, crazy bit of camera, very fast, like a machine gun. Um, you know, but the way the Sony works for me, it's smaller, lighter. Yes, the battery doesn't last amazingly well, but it, you know, I always carry another one on me, or, or the fact that Sony A7R2 is, is, I've got the grip, so it's um, two batteries on all the time. Uh, and uh, you know, so everything I I have now purchased for what I, I use and what I need to do, it does me very well. So um, if there's anything, you know, let's say if there's anything out there anybody wants to know about, I can hopefully source the lens or the camera um, via contacts or any other photographers I know who are using them. And if anybody wants to ask any questions, please do, and we will try and help you. Um, like I say. Please comment below and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can.